Chaz, I just wondered how you felt the team had coped with the fallout from KP's book and whether or not um, one or two of the things that he brings up in it, such as bullying and, and perhaps bowlers berating fielders and things like that, whether they were things that actually you might need to deal with and, and whether you had or not. Um, well, we've we've had a couple of weeks uh, together, you know, obviously since that as well. So, um, you know, we haven't felt the need to talk about it at all, really. Um, and it's uh, it's been, a, I say, a really good place to be around the last couple of weeks. Do you feel that the squad now essentially really moved on? From yeah, I think we have. I think now, obviously, all the fallout from it has happened. Um, you know, in the summer, I felt we were moving on as a side, but obviously we had... You know, had the release date, kind of everyone was, was talking about it, what's going to happen here. And to me, it's all happened now, it's all out from his side. And it's, you know, it is, as a players, we're just desperate now to, you know, there's nothing more of that can really come out. And we can just go and try and build and move forward as, as a side. And that, as a captain of that, is a, a good place to be. Angelo yesterday described uh, their India tour, a tour that many of the squad didn't want to go on in the first place. They called it an embarrassment. Does that give you a, a, a psychological advantage, given the series that you've had in the summer? Is that something that you've spoken about in this squad? Well, not, we haven't actually spoken about Sri Lanka yet. Um, we've all been speaking, you know, concentrating on what we want to do um, in these in these couple of weeks. Um, you know, I, I actually haven't followed too much of the results in terms of uh, what's been happening. To I've been watching too much of the games yet. Uh, we've got time to do that. Obviously, there was some amazing innings yesterday by Rohit. Um, incredible stuff and. Um, yeah, but we, you know, we all know that Sri Lanka in their home conditions, um, a fully, motiv Sri Lankan, uh, fully motivated Sri Lankan side in the home conditions are you know, formidable, hence we've only won there once. Uh, whilst it was a difficult summer in, in many respects, as to, uh, today we've seen Gary Balance named as almost the emerging test player of the year. So there were players who did come through. So uh, what's your tribute to Gary and almost the way that he's uh, made an impact at uh, the highest level? Well, I, as I said, it's... A lot of the stuff, some of the good stuff in Test cricket wasn't really being written about, you know. And you know, certainly, I think you know him and Joe Root in particular have been outstanding, have been outstanding for us as a as a batting unit in Test cricket. Um, I think Joe almost averaged a hundred in, in against India. Um, and you know, Gary, you know, we talked to us at the beginning of summer, me and Peter Moores, who was gonna who was gonna bat at three, and uh, you know, for a guy to take on that challenge who's never batted there before um, and pass it with flying colours is. A real testament to him. Um, he's obviously a fantastic player, let's, you know. But his te to me, his uh, his character, um, his determination to do well and do that. Um, he's, he he knows his method incredibly well, and you know it's just I think the emerging player of the year is a fully justified title for him. Um, and uh, you know he's uh, he'd probably be hurting that he's not in the one day squad, um, but that's what you kind of you want people who are desperate to get back in there and play. And but in terms of his year, it's been fantastic to see a person. <coughs> You know, grow like he has done, and and score the runs in the manner he has, and I won't forget that the hundred, the way he went to his hundred here on that against Sri Lanka. I think a lot of people will remember that.